coming back to what you said earlier about different ways of looking at the left agenda, certain commonalities for certain differences as well, I think there are some interesting questions that are being raised that a part of these policies, whether it is Brazil or it's Venezuela, is predicated on lots of natural resources these countries have, mm -hmm. using it essentially to transfer money to the poorer sections mm -hmm. and therefore institute the kind of bringing people out of poverty. So redistributing the wealth of the country in a certain way, but based not on expropriation of the wealthy, but based on expropriation of natural resources, oil mm. in the case of both Brazil and Venezuela. The argument is this is what Ecuador and even Bolivia are attempting to do, using their forest wealth in that sense. So effectively, it is in some sense an underwriting of the welfare state or the development state agenda using natural resources, but in that sense, maybe a part of a nationalist agenda, but not necessarily a radical agenda. What did you think about it? No, I think, I, you know, this is something that has to be thought out very well. Um, one of the issues here is that every country is going to take its own path. And it's a mistake to think that all the countries are going to do it the same way. But in certain cases, that certainly is the case of Bolivia, that certainly is the case of Venezuela, to a lesser extent, Ecuador and to a lesser extent, uh, Nicaragua, who can, must, must be uh, included in this, in this process. Uh, I, I would say that they are, of course, the emphasis has been on natural resources. But in certain cases, like the case of Venezuela and like the case of Bolivia, there have been, to, to a certain extent, a nationalization of, uh, of certain uh, enterprises that are very representative of the previous domination model. Of course, the country that has advanced more, more on, that, on that road is Venezuela. There have been nationalization of banks, uh, nationalization of, of um, uh, food distribution uh, firms. There have been several nationalizations. Uh, I think the Chavez government has a strategy behind that. It's going step by step towards that. But I think that, of course, there is in Latin America, in, in all the range of different Latin American lefts, there are what one would call the revolutionary strategy and the reformist strategy. Uh, I think both are valid according to the circumstances. I think what is important is that left-wing forces, when they are in power, advance as, as much as possible. But bearing in mind that too radical, too fast advance might lead to a defeat and a bigger disaster, and, and a reversal, a bigger reversal. So all these strategies have to be very carefully designated delineated. Another thing that is important is the creation of ALBA, of the Alliance, Bolivarian Alliance for the Americas, of which the, the, the nucleus is Cuba, Venezuela, but there are other countries. I think that with ALBA, what we are trying to produce is a more coherent linkage of the different strategies that each country is following. And this is a guarantee to the permanence of the left. These countries are, are doing it in a democratic framework, although they have refounded the state. No doubt Bolivia in the future will have whatever happens. I'll come back on the issue of Alba and Banco Sur, because uh -huh. I have some okay. questions on that as okay. well. But coming back to this question about what you said, that we have to go, or Latin American left has to go in a way that they don't isolate themselves and invite a re reversal. I think that's a very important point, what you were saying is, that given the fact that America still remains, the United States still remains a major threat to all Latin American mm -hmm. movements, that the larger 
coalition from reformists to revolutionaries of the left, all of the different strands of the left, if they split, then it is possible that American intervention could succeed. So in that sense, tactically, it is important that all, all sections understand the importance of the unity over there. Coming into this, I think the issue that, you know, that what you said earlier, that the attempt to split reformist governments yeah. from, from more radical governments kind of thing, is it really an attempt of this kind that can be separate them, make them fight each other? But till now, what we see is, at least at the continental level, the Latin American governments have stayed together vis-a-vis -vis United States hegemony. And that, I think, is something which I was saying earlier, is one of the new elements that we see, that Latin America, different shades of government, all of them have unitedly opposed the US hegemony, particularly on the issue of Honduras. The United States could still not get its view in spite of various attempts. So do you think that this is, in fact, the political victory of the larger left in Latin America? I think so. I think so. There are, you know, we are in the middle of a new stage of the political battles. Uh, I think uh, Evo Morales put it very interestingly recently when he said that three coup, coup attempts have been attempted in Latin America against uh, left-wing regimes. The coup against Chavez in 2002, Three. the coup against uh, Celaya in Honduras, and the coup against Correa in Ecuador. Okay. And up till now he said, we're winning 2-1. We're winning 2-1. But it is still one against. Yes, so well, uh, one can always say, maybe it's good that this thing happened. It's bad for Honduras obviously, and, and, and the regime that has been established in Honduras has been particularly uh, harmful for journalists. The number of journalists who have been murdered and, and kidnapped in Honduras is incredible. It's very, it's very uh, hypocritical of uh, the U.S. and other right-wing forces to criticize Cuba for what can only be called minor issues of human rights, and such a big issue of human rights as the as the disappearance and murder of journalists in Honduras. It doesn't appear in the press. But I think that uh, the, um, what is happening right now is that the left-wing forces are, have been able to isolate any attempt from the right to reestablish the, the initiative. For example, one of the regimes that they expected to become a key regime in, in, in their return, well, first, the defeat of Uribe and the establishment of Santos. Santos is not left wing, but it's not Uribe. The other was the case of Piñera in Chile. Piñera, obviously, is one of the best cards that they can play. But Piñera has not been able to do very much. He has been such involved with the problems of Chile, the earthquake, the miners uh, disappearing. And now, more recently, what did happen? Um, there was another problem in Chile recently, which, uh, well, there, there are several scandals. So. I think that there is also the case of Martinelli in Panama. I think, you know, this is not surprising, that the right would try to come to do a comeback and that they would have punctual and limited successes. It's not something that, that should surprise us. That's the way that it's going to be. <clears throat> but in this process, in which there are going to be several electoral processes, the most important one is last year was Brazil. And the victory of Dilma Rousseff over Serra is very important for the left because it mantain maintains a continuity of policy. Now we are going to have other electoral processes. And the one that probably the next key one is the 2012 process in 
Venezuela. It must be recognized that the right wing opposition in Venezuela has reconstructed its strategy and has adopted a more intelligent strategy. They return to the National Assembly. Uh, they are trying to project the image of a rational opposition. But of course, they have, they have with them the original sin. The original sin is the attempted coup d'etat in 2002, 2002. And, the, and the refusal to participate in the elections in 2005. Those were two big mistakes they made. And this, I think, Chavez is in a position to get reelected in 2012. Of course, this is not a battle that must say, we must say that it's already won. But obviously, uh, President Chavez, for, for example, he took advantage of this situation with the rains and the flooding. Uh, he demonstrated that uh, the opposition doesn't really care about the country, and they only care about, about uh, overthrowing Chavez. But I, I think that this is the moment we are. We are in the midst of a giant chess game. But the left is making the right moves. We cannot expect to win everything. And we must be ready to, one, if we get some defeats, trying to isolate those defeats. And this is what has happened with the victories of the right in Panama, Martinelli, and in uh, Chile, Piñera. With the fact that the victory or the continuation of the hegemony of the right in Colombia is on a, under a different uh, uh, dispensation. Yeah. In which we, are, on the other hand, and this is something that we should look at, is what is going to happen in the United States. Mm. We have two years in front of us that are very complicated for the United States. Why? Because they have a divided government. And it's true that the right wing, especially are now utilizing their forces in Congress, Imagine the the, president, the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee of the House of Representatives is not other than Ileana Ross Lettinen, a very famous right-wing Cuban American, who already announced that she, from her position there, is going to do everything possible to 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 attack Chavez, to attack uh, Evo Morales, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that's not the final word. The United States, the, oh, in, my, in my prediction, the United States over the next two years is going to be very involved in the struggle between the Republican Party supported by the Tea Party, which is a weakness, not a strength of the Republican Party, in nationally, uh, nationally wise. And uh, on the other hand, Obama and the Democratic Party trying not to lose the 2012 elections. So I would bet that they are not going to have very much time. And of course, there is the economic crisis and, 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 and the, two and the wars, war, yeah, two wars. And we, so I don't see in the, in the makings any redesign of the uh, strategy on, on yeah. any uh, particularly realistic basis. And, and the oligarchy, well, the oligarchy is the oligarchy. The oligarchy is going to continue behaving like it always behaves. But always remember, the, for, for Latin America, if the oligarchy and the United States don't work very closely together and strengthen each other, it's very difficult for them because the majority is against them. So I, I see things strategically this way. Last question on the ALBA and the economy, because I think Mm -hmm. What Chavez is also doing is trying to restructure the Latin American economy in a uh -huh. way that at the core of it are the set of countries who don't then have to depend on the complete U.S. domination of the financial sector, which mm -hmm. is what it still does dominate. Do you think the Bankasur or the ALBA kind of attempts will, in that sense, create an alternative econ economic focus than that of the United States? 
Well, I would say that th that that is the purpose, no doubt about it. Uh, a creation of a solid uh, group of countries that uh, that reject U.S. domination, that reject uh, development on the basis of free trade, that uh, try to uh, to create, to develop, to consolidate a an integration process that puts the emphasis on social issues and, and on equality and fairness in the societies. Uh, I think this is the important thing about ALBA. Uh, but we cannot, we cannot say that this is already done, that this is a piece of cake, that this is going to happen. It requires a lot of, uh, I think it requires two things. A lot of political will, very clear political will, and at the same time, intelligent measures. You have to identify which are the areas that are susceptible to be integrated faster, and that at the same time, we have a spillover effect over the rest of the areas. I wish I could sound a more optimistic note, but I think that, that I can't. Uh, I think, uh, the moment we are is not the moment of having achieved a big success and trying to consolidate it. No, we are in the moment of constructing that big, big success. It, it, it is the potentialities for a big success and integration are there. But will we be able to take advantage of that and implement it? Well, that's another point. Uh, there is a lot of advance in the Cuba-Venezuela dimension of ALBA. But sometimes I look at ALBA and I don't see yet the contours of a real integration process. What I see in ALBA is like the unification of a bunch of bilateral, uh, bilateral um, agreements. agreements and bilateral initiatives, which is not bad. I mean, I am not saying that this is bad. But obviously, there are still not yet, for example, it is my understanding that the Sucre project and the Bacol's project are a little bit like, you know, the tame. But this is normal. And in the, if you look at the history of the European integration process, that happened all the time. And they had big crises. Well, like, for example, when, when France, unhappy about something Britain did, abandoned the, 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 the and, and, and block blocked the entry of Britain and, and left the, 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 the French chair vacant in, in, during a, a year. So it shouldn't surprise you, us. We should not become desperate. But at the same time, we must be constructing. Const regional integration is a construction of a region. It's the construction of a new political dimension. And it requires science and art, the art of politics, the art of trying to take advantage of these situations. I, I think we are in the right road. Uh, we cannot become desperate that success doesn't come very, integration does, is not, it's not a process that is characteristic, that its characteristic is the advance uh, progressively, no, 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 no. Integration a process which has zigzags, ups and downs, turnovers, reversals. So, but, but the possibilities are there. The possibilities are there. So on that note, we come to the end of our discussion. I think what you've said is very interesting. That we are at a moment where there are advances taking place. The right has lost its initiative. The U.S. hegemony has been partly contained but the future means how intelligent we can be in consolidating this process and bringing a new left alternative, if you will, to the world scenario. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.